So I'm doing an automatic to an NV4500 swap in my 1992 W250 with a 12-valve diesel. Um, yeah, there's a lot of videos out there that uh, really go into this swap. Uh, decent Garage, Tim Stevenson, he has a series of excellent videos. He's swapping in a G56 transmission. But a lot of the a lot of the principles are the same. I found his videos helpful when I was getting ready for this project. Um, anyhow, I, I just uh, just thought I'd make a quick video uh, showing some of the things I'm doing. Um, over here's my my new transmission. Um, this is an NV4500. It's uh, remanufactured. Um, I got it from Ryan at Moonshine Mafia Motorsports. And I just kind of wanted to uh, talk about him a bit because he's really been helpful. I got the NV4500 through him when I was having trouble uh, obtaining one elsewhere from uh, kind of the, the, the bigger names. Midwest Transmission, I think there was a couple other high impact gear. They were all out of NV4500s. Um, Ryan was able to get me one. Um, looks like uh, looks like a really nice transmission. Um, I th threw the shifter on there, and of course, without a clutch, um, it just seems to shift really nice and crisp. Um, I, I I know it's a little early to tell, but uh, so far it seems like a, a really nice transmission. I got this NV4500. Um, NP205 shifter bracket and the NV4500 mount here. I got that from Metal by Charlie. Um, just Google Metal by Charlie if you don't know who I'm talking about. Charlie Pitcher is his name. And looks like he makes first rate stuff. I'm kind of excited uh, to use this. It looks like it's going to use the exact same um, cross member position. That the automatic transmission used. Uh, if my measurements are correct, it should line right up with my cross member. So uh, check him out. Metal by Charlie. Check him out if you're doing one of these swaps. Um, the really nice, uh, high quality looking pieces. Uh, it greatly simplifies one of these swaps. Um, so the, the transfer case shifter will go right on here. Um, and then this should use the stock cross member location without having to fab up a mount. It just makes it go easier. I mean, I will. I could probably come up with something, but I don't think I could do uh, probably near as good a job as what he's done with these pieces. And then I'm um, just going to show a couple other things that I'm working on here. Here you can see the, the 23 spline input. Uh, for the MP205 transfer case and right beside it you can see the 29 spline uh, input uh, much obviously a much beefier shaft and the larger input bearing to go along with it uh, this is the input bearing for the 23 spline this is the in input bearing for the 29 spline so I had to have the transfer case input uh, machined out for the larger input bearing. Um, lucky enough uh, living here in Fairbanks that I uh, have a local guy, John Howe with Howie's Machine Shop. Um, he's, a, uh, he's a Dodge enthusiast. He's done this before so I, I stripped my transfer case down, uh, took it to him. Uh, it looks like he's done an awesome job of machining out this transfer case for the larger input bearing. So there's still some metal filings in here. I've got to uh, pressure, hook up my pressure washer, clean this case up really good, and then let it dry. And then once it does that, I'm going to rebuild it. New bearings, new seals. Uh, the other thing he did with the flywheel housing, as uh, as you may know, when you switch to the second gen flywheel housing, uh, which I've done here, then you have to use a second gen a Dodge starter. The problem is is that the clearance with the frame rail. 
So what I ended up doing is I ended up clocking this starter. You can see how normally this flange would be up here at this hole um, and so forth. But when you do that, the motor interferes with the frame rail. So what I did is I clocked this starter and this hole and this hole use factory locations. Um, then this this hole is hanging out in the middle of nowhere. I considered just having two starter bolts, um, but I decided to maybe if I could get this third one to work. So I, uh, you know, I brought this in to John at the machine shop, Howie's machine shop. Um, he recommended that he uh, TIG weld this up with some aluminum to give it a little bit more for the screw to grab. So then he, he. Uh, machined that out and tapped it. Now that screw it kind of comes in here to the web on the inside. You can see it there. Um, I think that screw is still going to have plenty to grab to um, being that especially being that he welded up this pad. Um, so uh, I think that'll get me, and I already checked clearance, it's going to be a little tight against the block to hook up the wires, but it is doable. So, um, pretty excited about that. I think that's going to get me the starter uh, on the second gen adapter plate. Um, so it'll work without having to cut a notch out of my frame, which I really don't want to do. The other thing I'll show here, as you may or may not know, when you machine the, the small input uh, transfer case out to the larger bearing, uh, the seals can be problematic. Um, but, and this is more parts I obtained from Ryan at Moonshine Mafia Motorsports. I would really recommend if you're thinking about doing this, uh, give Ryan a call. Extremely helpful. Uh, again, that's where I got the NV4500 transmission. Um, so, he sourced, uh, this is made by Advanced Adapters, but this is a two-piece, a two-piece adapter to make the large input uh, transfer case work with the NV4500 transmission. Um, so it'll go on there essentially like that. This is, this is two pieces. So you got the, you got this piece that bolts on, and then you have the spacer that goes on top of it. And what's really nice about this, um, if you use the, if you machine out the factory adapter, um, it's difficult to put a seal on it. But with this advanced adapters kit, it has a nice surface right here, and it has a seal that goes in there. So there's, there's not going to be the uh, shortcoming of machining out the factory adapter. So I'm pretty excited about that as well. And again, I got all that from Ryan at Moonshine Mafia Motorsports. Um, definitely hit him up if you're looking at doing this. I know some folks just uh, they'll use the 23 spline and get a 29 to 23 spline uh, coupler. However, um, I, I haul fairly heavy with this truck. Um, I was just worried about the weak point. As you, can, it's obvious that the 29 spline input is much beefier than the 23 spline input. And I figured while I was doing it, I was going to try to do it right. And um, that's why I went ahead and had the case machined out. So I think I'm going to end up with a really, really nice uh, finished uh, product. But anyhow, I'm going to leave the, the more involved videos to those that uh, make better videos. But that's just a couple things that I'm, uh, I'm working on I thought might help somebody out there. I'm also, uh, when I rebuild my transfer case, I'm also going to put a e-brake or a park brake on the transfer case output and that's what I have here. This is a, a kit by Northwest Fabrication. Um, here's the disc that's going to be on the output. Um, output flange for the rear drive line. And a Willwood caliper. So, um, instead of having a problematic um, emergency brake on my rear drums, it's going to be on a transfer case output. So. I think that'll also be a, a big improvement. Um, when I'm in four-wheel drive, all four tires will hold. 
Um, so anyhow, uh, just show real quick a, a few of the things I'm doing here with my uh, manual swap. Um, I may make another video if I come across anything else I think will be of interest. Um, hope this helps somebody out there.